So we will never know exactly what was said in that private meeting between Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, but more and more as we gather additional resources, learn more about the context, it seems like Bernie Sanders' interpretation of that event is more accurate, and on top of that, it seems like Elizabeth Warren's team deliberately leaked the story in hopes that maybe this would hurt Bernie Sanders and that they would benefit from this. Now, we do know that somebody else who met with Bernie Sanders claims that he never said anything like this. Tulsi Gabbard tweeted out, I also met with Bernie Sanders before announcing my candidacy. We had a nice one-on-one -on -one conversation and I informed him that I would be running for president. In that meeting, he showed me the greatest respect and encouragement, just as he always has. So there's that. And additionally, the Washington Post published an article where I don't know if they talked to a new source, but they give us more context that sheds light on what Bernie Sanders might have said. Quote, two people with knowledge of the conversation at the 2018 dinner at Warren's home told the Washington Post that Warren brought up the issue by asking Sanders whether he believed a woman could win. One of the people with knowledge of the conversation said Sanders did not say a woman couldn't win, but rather that Trump would use nefarious tactics against the Democratic nominee. So if this is true, then what Elizabeth Warren is saying is a gross misrepresentation and this is why when she said look bernie said that a woman couldn't win and i disagreed but i'm done talking about it we all got mad because additional context is crucial here this matters and because she is so willing to move on tells me that her team probably leaked this story and it backfired and now she wants to move on before it hurts her anymore but this is unacceptable like if you truly did leak this story then uh, we deserve to know what was said in that meeting. Again, we're never going to know exactly what was said because they weren't recording the meeting. But I mean, you are bringing this up now. So let's talk about it. Let's have an honest conversation about this so that way we can figure out where the truth is. But as time goes on, it does seem like Elizabeth Warren's team did leak this story to the press. As Steve Peoples of AP reports, a senior Bernie Sanders advisor tells me that they believe that Elizabeth Warren's campaign intentionally leaked a false description of their 2018 meeting, says it's a recent pattern of Warren attacking the Democratic frontrunner. So Bernie's team now believes that Elizabeth Warren leaked this story to the press, and even Nate Silver of 538, who is no fan of Bernie Sanders, believes that Elizabeth Warren's team most likely leaked this story, tweeting, wait, there are people who don't think the Warren campaign leaked the story? So if I had to guess, it seems like Elizabeth Warren's team did in fact leak this story because they want to hurt Bernie, because we're three weeks away from Iowa, and their team is desperate because her numbers are falling. And that is incredibly unfortunate because if you truly wanted to contrast, you know, the differences between you and Bernie Sanders, if you stick to policy, nobody would have a problem with that. But you chose to go the smear route. And that's really disgusting. That's something that I do not respect. That's something I don't respect. Because sexism in politics is an incredibly important issue. And if Bernie Sanders talked about the you know prevalence of sexism and how it's a real issue, and you misconstrued what he said to suit your own political narrative, that's really disgusting. And it seems like that's the case. So I just don't see why Bernie Sanders would lie about this. It's clear that Elizabeth Warren leaked the story because she had the most to gain here, and when you take into consideration Sean King's sources, if we can accept what he's saying as truth, that, you know, she admitted that she embellished what Bernie Sanders had said, then it really doesn't look good for Elizabeth Warren. Now, look, I don't know if this is going to hurt Bernie overall, but I do know that it's not going to help Elizabeth Warren, although it may benefit one candidate, Joe Biden. And let me remind you that he is currently the front runner. He is the front runner. He's polling in first place nationally, and he's basically statistically tied with Bernie Sanders for first place in Iowa and New Hampshire currently. So I don't know what Elizabeth Warren was trying to accomplish here. Maybe her and Biden have some type of, you know, non attack truce or something maybe he promised her a vp slot if she went after bernie i don't know but what i do know is that i am incredibly incredibly disappointed in elizabeth warren because this is something that you know i i just i expect better from her i've been disappointed in her time and again but this really does seem like a new low. Now, I do want to play you a couple of clips. The first one is from Anna Kasparian, who appeared on uh, CNN. 
And she talked to Chris Cuomo and Howard Dean. I'm not going to play what Howard Dean had to say, but I will play what Anna said because she made phenomenal points about this and everything she said needs to be heard by everyone. We also need to mention that Bernie Sanders encouraged Elizabeth Warren to run back in 2016. And there are multiple videos of Bernie Sanders dating back to the 1980s where he publicly spoke about how he believes a woman can win. And so... All of this contextual information is incredibly important to the conversation, and unfortunately it's being left out to paint a particular candidate as some sort of sexist yep. when the facts just don't bear that out. Well, we don't know what the facts are because Elizabeth Warren says... We do, though. But he we said We do. It. We have but evidence of... No, how do she we know says, he said No, no, no. I don't, I, don't know, I don't know anything. I'm saying Elizabeth Warren says he said it. So now... We've got something here, right? If you and I have a, a conversation and I say, no, Anna said it. And Anna said, I would never say anything like that. I said, well, she said it to me. Now we have a problem, Anna. You're saying it's out of character. It's out of keeping. This isn't who he right? is. You have at the top of the ticket, you have Bernie Sanders. You have Senator Warren. You have vice, former Vice President Biden. You have uh, Buttigieg. And really, you have Klobuchar is hanging around. They all represent very different things. Is this proof of a party that does not know one or both of two things? One, who do we really want? Two, who can really beat this president? Well, I think it's important to look at how the polls have changed depending on how the candidates have positioned themselves on the policies. So if you can note, Elizabeth Warren was doing fabulously well in the polling when she was, you know, Positioning herself as a strong progressive, as a fighter for Medicare she for made all, a run. as someone she who made wanted a run to, and she th took some of Bernie's did. support during that time. But now she there's did. been attrition. And then, She's lost them back well, and Bernie got some and Buttigieg has. got some. So let me just finish my point. I think the reason why she noticed a dip in the polls, and if you just go back to the timing of all of this, it was after she put out her transition plan for Medicare for right. All. That transition plan made it abundantly clear mm. that she was not actually going to push for Medicare for All. She was really going to push for a public option. Then you see this dip in the poll, right? Mm. Now, my problem with Elizabeth Warren is that rather than acknowledging the flaw in her tactic there and changing course, she has decided to bring up a conversation that she had with Bernie Sanders in December of 2018 mm. when he notices a significant mm. rise in the polls. Like, the American people aren't stupid. They notice what's going on. They notice that she's bringing this up mm. at a time when her campaign is really struggling. Now, now, listen, I think it's a bad move on her point. I don't want to give I them... think she should focus on policy. I hear you. So everything that I have had on my mind she said there, you know, she called Warren out for wanting to shut down the conversation. Um, she talked about how Bernie Sanders wanted Elizabeth Warren to run against Hillary Clinton back in 2015. In fact, we all know there are multiple reports. This is confirmed by Bernie Sanders campaign, as well as re as reporters that Bernie Sanders would have never ran had Elizabeth Warren entered the race. But he wanted a progressive to challenge Hillary Clinton. Elizabeth Warren refused to step up because she was too afraid to challenge power, and Bernie did. So why would he want someone who he believes would lose to challenge Hillary Clinton? Like, that doesn't even make sense. Everything Anna said was phenomenal, and it's so crucial that we have people in mainstream media to speak truth to power, because CNN has been talking about this all day long, and I'm not necessarily of the belief that CNN viewers, who are usual viewers of the program, of the network, will be supporting Bernie Sanders anyway, but nonetheless, they need to hear a counter-argument that makes sense, and Anna Kasparian was a breath of fresh air. So that was phenomenal, kudos to her. Now I've got one more clip for you. This is from the senior advisor to the Sanders campaign, Jeff Weaver. He talked to Cuomo, and he also explained the situation, what he thinks maybe happened. Perhaps Elizabeth Warren misconstrued what Bernie Sanders said, but he also called CNN out for their bias, which was also incredibly important because um, after a Des Moines Register poll came out showing that Bernie Sanders was in first place, CNN featured that poll. They cited it and then they had the headline, no clear leader, as you can see now from the graphic that I put up on the screen. This is what CNN ran with. No clear leader when Bernie Sanders is clearly the leader. So Jeff Weaver addressed this story and also talked about that bias that CNN needs to address themselves. You guys are running against somebody where your high ground's supposed to be, he's a liar. We don't lie the way he does. We may have our wires crossed. I don't know, I wasn't in the room, you weren't in the room. Elizabeth Warren was. Correct. And she's saying he sure. said it. So you're in a box now, where either you're saying 
she's lying, or you got to own it and give a context argument. Which is it? Well, that, look, Chris, I, I think there were some wires crossed. I mean, clearly what there was a discussion. What does that mean, wires crossed? There, they, they, had, they had lasagna, and so, so what you're saying is that she said, hey, Bernie, glad to see you. Hey, Elizabeth, how are you? Uh, hey, I'm running for president, Bernie. Oh, a woman can't win. Is that how the conversation went? I don't think so. Look, I think they well, talked about the 2020 race. You don't know. You weren't there. She says, uh, she, she, he said, uh, she said I want to run. He disagreed with the idea that a woman could win. Why would she lie about it? What does that say about her? you got to make a case. No, what I'm saying is I think the wires are crossed. I think there was a discussion about Trump, misogyny, a sexism in politics, and, and, and the difficulty of running in the era of Trump for women, the special challenges that women face in the era of Trump. But, you know, those conversations can sometimes get misconstrued, Chris. I get you. Maybe that's what it is. But they've got to clear it up, and I'll tell you why. Here's why you have to uh, clear it up. I know if you take a step sideways and say, what do you care about this for? We have much bigger issues. Yes and no. The biggest issue that you face, I face, we all face right now in this circus uh, of what have, has become of our political dialogue is the truth. The truth has to matter on every oh, level sure. if you want to lead us. That's why this story matters. I don't care if Bernie Sanders thinks a woman can run, win, not run, not win. As long as he makes the case, that's fine. We're still allowed to our opinions in this democracy. And obviously he knows women can be formidable. One beat him by 4 million votes, and she beat this standing president for, by 2.8 sure. million votes. But the truth matters, Jeff. Uh, that's absolutely. why I'm asking you, and that's why I don't like that Danny DeVito got pulled. No, no look, the truth does matter, uh, Chris. There's no doubt about that. You know, Bernie Sanders, as you know, uh, has a well-earned reputation for being authentic about talking mm -hmm. about what's on his mind and not sugarcoating things. Uh, I think voters understand that. That's why they like Bernie Sanders. They're, as you know, because you've been in this business for a while, a lot of voters you talk to are like, I don't agree with Bernie on everything, but you know what? The guy says that the way the he the real deal. It, he's honest. He doesn't sugarcoat it. He's not calculating. Uh, and I think uh, folks have to weigh that. The truth of the matter is, is they had a meeting, a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Uh, and I, as I said, I think it's Fairly likely, based on what I know, that the wires got crossed. It is unfortunate that mm. a year after the meeting, frankly, that this was sort of leaked out, dumped out by folks who weren't at the meeting. Uh, you know, you got to ask some questions about that, given that it's three weeks before the Iowa caucus. Bernie Sanders, as you know, because you follow these things very closely, is on top of the polls in Iowa. He's on top of most of the polls in New Hampshire, a tied in Nevada, and the top of the polls in California. And so, you know, you do have to wonder about the timing of this, not on the part of Senator Warren, but some of the people around her. Well, well but look, but, you know, she's weighing in on it. Uh, and look, and not all the polls, right? You guys are all knotted up up at the top. And I think it's a real statement about the state of confusion within that party about what they think beats this sitting president and what they really want. So let's go to tomorrow night. Um, you're Bernie well, Sanders. Well, I will say this. Let me just say this one point on that, on, on that point, Chris. Let me just say this. Only when it's Bernie Sanders ahead by three uh, does CNN run a banner that says, unclear who's leading. If Joe no, Biden no, no, leading no, by no, three, no. Don't do that to me, Jeff. Works. But anyway, but Jeff, that's, but hold on. No, no, but that's true, Chris. Come no, on. No, no, it, it, it's that's not true. true. You know that's and true. just to be clear, just to be clear, there, he's with, you're within the margin of error right now, which is fine. That's my point about the whole top of the ticket. I've said it to you. I've said it many times. But let's just be clear here. Let's put our cards on the table. You know me well, brother. I For was sure. on New Day talking to Bernie Sanders before he was even in the race saying, hey, you're so big on these ideas. They're such big ideas. Why don't you run if you want your voice? And he said, nobody wants to hear from Bernie Sanders about these things. So I have been someone who is a yeah, fan yeah, yeah, of Bernie like Sanders' graphics, voice. Chris for a long time. I agreed. The reason why Chris Cuomo thinks that this is an important story is because, you know, both Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren call out Donald Trump for his repeated lies, rightfully so, but now we're in a situation where Bernie Sanders says one thing, Elizabeth Warren is saying another thing, and one of them is clearly lying, so what matters is the truth, right? They both claim to care about the truth, but yet one of them is lying. And it doesn't matter that Joe Biden boasted about how sexism isn't going to impact him since he's not a woman. What matters is that we need to figure out who's lying. Is it Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren? I mean, that was incredibly sanctimonious of him. But if you're curious about who's telling the truth, well, most likely it's the person who didn't lie about his Native American heritage. She benefited off of this Native American heritage lie for I don't know how long. And then when activists called on her to speak out, when Standing Rock protesters were being brutalized by militarized police, she stayed silent. She was nowhere to be found and only spoke out like after the story was like long done, basically. Um, so, I mean, if you're going to question who's more trustworthy, would you trust Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren? I'll tell you this. There's a reason why I trust Bernie was trending on Twitter while this story broke.
There's a reason why Refund Warren with thousands of people asking Act Blue to refund their donation of Elizabeth Warren on Twitter. It's because we all trust Bernie Sanders more than Elizabeth Warren, because if he said something, he would say, I said that, and then explain himself or admit, look, I, I've changed. I don't agree with that, right? He didn't deny when his weird college papers or whatever came out, the stories that he wrote. He just said, look, that was cringeworthy. It was stupid. And I don't I don't agree with that. It was satirical writings. And I wish I didn't do that. Like he has no reason to lie. He is known for being honest and trustworthy. And Elizabeth Warren has had times when she doesn't tell the truth, where she's unreliable. And we know that she's dipping in the polls and she's getting desperate. Right. She wants to save her failing campaign. So, I mean, I think I think it's obvious Bernie is the one who we can trust, who most people, I think, trust. But overall, I want people to remember that this is exactly what we expected would happen. It's probably the first of many attacks against Bernie Sanders. And, you know, it, it still doesn't necessarily make it any better, seeing that Elizabeth Warren, of all people, we kind of thought was an ally, or at least the closest to being an ally in this race. Nonetheless, you know, let's move on and keep our eye on the prize. And remember that Bernie Sanders is still polling extremely well. There's a new poll that shows that he's in first in California. In fact, he grew his lead. So we can win this. Let's try to let all of this just, you know, roll off of our back or shoulders, whatever the saying is. And let's move on because it's not worth our time. Overall, this isn't going to help Elizabeth Warren Will it hurt Bernie? I don't necessarily know, but it's not going to be, you know, a nail in his coffin or anything like that. I think he certainly can recover if this does hurt him. And I think that whoever is telling the truth at the end of the day, that's that's going to come out, at least to a large extent. We may never know exactly what was said. You know, we're not going to get a verbatim transcript. But I think that, you know, in the end, the truth will win out. And that's why I'm confident that Bernie Sanders, in the end, will emerge on top in spite of this sad attempt by Elizabeth Warren to smear him.